Hi, my name is Emmanuel Coyen. I'm a junior in electrical engineering and also a project manager for the NJIT Solar Card team. Hi, and I'm Peter Zimski. I have just been admitted to grad school for power and energy systems, although I'm still an undergrad. And our advisor is Dr. Jessica Ratsodi, and we would just like to extend our thanks for allowing us to present our proposal today. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. So Amazon is showing us an example of how uh, time effective drone deliveries can be by reducing time that would take usually two days um, with Amazon Prime to 30 minutes. Um, so there we see it delivering uh, the package in a short amount of time. So we were thinking, why not fulfill you know, the human fantasy of quote unquote flying cars um, the way Ehang is doing so in China um, and they're transporting people um, from place to place, except we think we can do it better um, and we'll follow, uh, explain that in our design. Um, uh, but again, f uh, flying from Princeton to New Jersey Institute of Technology would take 37 minutes and driving uh, would, on the Garden State Parkway would take about an hour. So it's a 35% decrease in travel time. And so this is our design. Um, we're aiming for lightweight efficiency um, in terms of uh, power and energy um, by adding solar panels. And if you notice, there is no landing gear on the bottom of the drone. It is just rubber. So it, again, we're just being nitpicky about all of the details of the drone and taking away traditional landing gear and um, attempting new solutions so that we can optimize flight time, um, as well as being aerodynamic and obviously solar, um, like I said. Um, so there is a desire for flying cars in Michigan study. Um, Ask respondents uh, to rate themselves of, as how, how desirable flying cars are be, would be on a zero to 100 scale and the median uh, response was a 60. So we can use this to gauge um, market uh, desire. Yes. Um, of those surveyed, the majority voted for an electric power source, much like you see Tesla implementing their electric cars. We also use solar, the to see the more vote, as an additional power source in order to reach our goal of increased light time. Distributed all throughout this prototype will be 84 batteries in our current uh, design. This technology is, it exists. College university students are also, are, have built a solar power drone and Facebook's Aquila has implemented solar panels in order to stay airborne for months. Here's our budget. We'll be ordering the batteries, which will be most of the weight, and we will also have controllers, a series of them, which will be coding alongside the drone competition and developing to showcase next semester. The total comes up to 3,000, and we also have items for safety as well as storage. We're currently at this stage where we're looking to secure funding, and we've finalized a base design. We'll build a base prototype for the senior capstone this December 2018, and we'll order components by November 7th once it's uh, available and build a prototype and test and gather data and on a user interface. And as we design, we'll make iterations until we arrive at the design which we will look to implement for the full scale model. In summary, we look to minimize travel time, maximize flight time, and bring a personal aerial vehicle to the average consumer. Any questions? Um, batteries. The other fuel, fuel source will be batteries. The batteries the actually batteries are, need to be charged. So you're saying it yeah. can be charged only with solar? Yeah. Well, the thing, it will, the primary source will be batteries, so it will be charged like possibly on the ground, but the solar will be additional. The, the thing with the batteries is that they will be distributed throughout the vehicle, Here. Here. so that for, it will be very energy dense. Okay. Right. So solar will be the way to do it. 
increase increase wait time and is it no wheels yeah there are, um, there are no wheels to again um, uh, minimize the amount of weight that it is uh, lifting off the ground thereby again um, maximizing the flight time and battery efficiency uh, to have you know the most energy out of the batteries so it doesn't have wheels now so practically if it's on the ground it will just be completely stationary so it won't move uh, there's yeah there's a vertical takeoff instead of uh, you know having a for example a plane has a horizontal runway that it has to uh, reach a certain speed and it will take off so we don't have that we have a vertical takeoff which actually the Michigan study that we pointed out um, there was a survey about how flying cars would uh, how people would want them to take off and their top answer was a vertical takeoff as opposed to um, you know. I understand. I'm just curious if there's mobility on the ground or mobility only in the air. Yeah, it's just it's just in the air. Yeah. What's the size of the camera? So the size about two to three passengers. That that's our goal, two to three. Um, and ideally, we would want it to fit inside a parking spot. Um, right now, we're a little like the, the propellers are making it not fit, but the airframe arms, uh, in terms of airframe arms, they are able to fit in a parking spot. It's about nine feet wide. Um, yeah. Any of you them have launched a flying car, right? A couple of companies have launched. Yeah, yeah. So the, like we brought up in uh, the video, there's Ehang in China, um, which is already testing this and yeah, proving proving the feasibility of, of such an idea. Yeah. Great, thank you. The question is, the Chinese design similar to what you're thinking? Is it the same? So the, the Chinese design uh, differs from, from our, our design because instead of having uh, batteries filled with the, within the airframe arms and taking up the, all the empty space, um, they just have, I think, three batteries underneath um, the fuselage. Uh, and we think we, you can have a lot more batteries, um, which will make it uh, have a longer flight duration. I think. Their, their, their design has um, a 15 to 20 minute flight time. Uh, with our design, we calculated, like theoretically, it could go for 40 plus minutes. Is it um, solar powered or is it um, plug-in? Yeah. You want to, you want to? Yeah, it would be plug-in for them. And also, they have eight propellers. We have four, just because we will be landing on the arms as well. Have you considered any kind of wind speed or like in the case? Yeah, so the wind speed, um, like what, what do you mean by, by you, you mean like have I, um, in my calculations, the, the flight time of, of if there's wind? The lift up and moving against the wind? Oh yeah, so it would, it would just take up more power to, um, that would be called a headwind and it would have to just go against it. Um, like it would be a backwards force vector, you could say, and then you'd be wanting to go forward, so you'd have the uh, forces acting against each other, and it would use more more power to do so. Yeah, yeah I don't know if that's your question, but we'll test for that. What is the maximum weight that you have considered? Um, we haven't considered um, s such a thing just because we haven't had. I mean, I've flown a drone in, in severe wind before, and it is very unstable, like even military, like DJI's drones. But I think the bigger the aircraft is, the more it is able to sustain headwind uh, wind speed, just because it's a bigger thing. Um, yeah. Hey, no if you also looked at some environmental conditions outside, other than wind speed, I mean, if you're off the road, there are other barriers and yeah, yeah, there is infrastructure that we would have to build around. Well, we would have to, yeah, we would have to kind of build rules around what can happen, but we're, we're not at that stage. We're just trying to make something that flies right now. Yeah. Now, would this be, a, a, for example, a pilot was uh, thrown out, I would think, and it would uh, perhaps uh, be like a shuttle, right? You fly from point A to point B, 
um, which would both be urban areas that are difficult to access, which would make the, uh, the, the, the advantage of the flight time um, even more pronounced. Is, is that a, a business model as opposed to just flying anywhere? Uh, yeah. So that 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 could possibly also have rideshare services where you could drive to it and then take off vertically and then get off, take a Uber where you're going. That's a possible thing, a future projection. Uh, yeah. Well, you're you're not having landing gear, would suggest you want to pick carefully where you would land and. It, let me go. Yeah, so, so when we say we don't have traditional landing gear, because I said we don't have traditional landing gear, the, um, the arms would have, uh, at the ends of them, they would have sort of these sticks that you land on. Uh, we don't have that. We just have a rubber belly. So it does still land. It just lands differently than traditional ones because we believe that that will eliminate some of the unnecessary weight to just optimize efficiencies. You have to be very careful. You were oriented so your, your, uh, your uh, uh, propeller didn't hit the, hit the ground. And you, right. You need a flat. Yeah. You need it level when it takes off. Yeah. I think there's not a lot of, I think we only have about six million questions. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> good, good idea, good concept. We need a lot more work needs to be done. So okay. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think I'm going to